when I was studying with him in Damascus in his masjid in an area called Hajjera in Masjid al Farooq, one day he told us, he said, right here, many, many years ago, I was teaching between Maghrib and Isha. And at the end of my lesson, one of the attendees came to me and said, Shaykh, there's a Palestinian jinn in your uh, lesson and the jinn is giving you salam. And the Shaykh said, I laughed at the man and I said to him, Wa alaykum as salam, peace be upon the jinn too. Can you ask this jinn, what is he doing in my lesson when the people of Palestine are more in need of him to help them, to support them, to assist them? I don't need him in my lesson and the people of Damascus don't need him. So this man, he went back into the gathering and he spoke to the jinn and he said, this is what the sheikh is saying. And the jinn responded to him. See, some people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through their piety and righteousness, gives them access. But you know, those people are extremely rare. And nobody should consider themselves automatically to be from amongst those rare people. Because it's, okay, it might be a fascination, but it's extremely dangerous. It's very, very dangerous. So this man went back into the gathering and asked the jinn. And the jinn responded. The man comes back to the sheikh. And Sheikh Khalid told us this himself. He said that the jinn responded to your question by saying, when, when the believing people from amongst human beings become weak, we, the jinn of the believing people, also become weak. So therefore, I've left Palestine and I've come to Damascus. And the Shaykh said, that was the end of the encounter. Now the Shaykh himself, even though he's a righteous man, he's a scholarly man, he's a man of very high piety uh, and goodness and greatness, he didn't want to engage the jinn himself. He said to the man who brought the message, go and uh, ask him this question. He didn't want to engage himself. When I was in Damascus, we had a number of um, students who were over interested in the unseen world and in particular with the jinn. And sometimes this can be quite dangerous and it can be uh, quite troublesome when people are over interested. Like we have people who, who come to us and say, oh, I'm always watching these quote unquote jinn videos and how to take out jinns and etc. This is something very seriously dangerous. I can tell you of a first hand story, not something that was hearsay or fairy tale. This was a first hand story that I know from uh, Damascus. And that was, there was one Bosnian student and he was no, well known amongst the Bosnian students. And um, I was told by one of his immediate friends who told me, he said, our friend, this particular Bosnian student, he's disappeared. I said to me, what do you mean he's disappeared? He said, he's just literally disappeared. We don't know where he is. I said, okay. He said, we've checked in the police stations, in the jails, in the hospitals, on the borders. We've contacted all of the authorities. We can't find him. He said, after doing all of that, we went to speak to some of the very senior scholars of Damascus and we asked them about what, what could possibly have happened to our friend. So they went to Sheikh Muhammad Sa'id Ramadan al-Buti Ali, who sent them to a very pious, righteous Sheikh, Sheikh Abu Yasin uh, al-Zamalkani Rahmatullahi Ali. This particular Sheikh, Sheikh Abu Yasin Zamalkani Rahmatullahi Ali, I met him uh, once or twice. He used to pray the Zuhr Salah in, in the masjid of Bab Musalla, he used to pray Zuhr there. And so my Bosnian friend said, we went to Sheikh Abu Yasin al-Zamalkani, Rahmatullah Ali, we explained the situation to him. And he said, give me a few days and I'll, I'll let you know. He said, after recitations, I've realized that he's actually been picked up and taken by the jinn. Huh? Yes, he's been picked up and taken away by the jinn. And the Sheikh said, and I know exactly where he is. On the outskirts of Damascus, D Damascus, there's an area called Tal. He said, in this area of Tal, there's an old derelict, derelict house in which your friend is. And he has been kidnapped and abducted by the jinn. The Sheikh said, I, I, I don't want to try to bring him back. Because if I do that, I could end up aggravating the jinn and they could possibly kill him. So we have to leave him in his position where he is. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permits for him to return, then inshallah I can help in, uh, in, uh, with his health. And if he's been affected by the jinn in any way, then I can help with some readings and etc. But at this moment in time, we can't pick him up and we can't return him back. 
to his family. And they also spoke to some other uh, scholars within Damascus. And they also said that one of the possible reasons why he was abducted by the jinn was that uh, due to his over-interest in the unseen world of in particular the jinn. Because the jinn, even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed mankind and jinn kind to worship him, but we don't really have anything in common with the jinn, except that they worship Allah and we worship Allah. Amongst them, there are believing people and amongst us as believing people. Amongst them, there's the disbelievers and within mankind, there are the disbelievers. But other than this, we don't really have anything in common with them. So we should take heed and lesson from this that we shouldn't overcomplicate our lives with, uh, with creatures that we don't really have much in common with. This was one. There was a student who I used to actually live with. And one day he became overexcited in his, um, in his worship. And he said to me, he said, I want to go up into that cave on the mountain of Qasyun. And I want to sit in i'tikaf, in isolation, in khalwa all alone. And I laughed at him and I said to him, you shouldn't be doing this. This is not for you. That's something very dangerous. That's something for the very elect, righteous, awliya Allah. Whom, if Allah gives them permission, they sit in isolation, they sit in seclusion, in khalwa, away from people. And remember Allah, I said, me and you were like beginner, beginners. That's not something for us. And I remember exactly where I was. We were walking in the Suq Hamidiyah, going towards the Masjid of Nuriya, where Nuruddin Zangi radiallahu anhu was, uh, is buried. And I said to him, this is not for you. But he didn't listen. And he went, he packed his bags and he went. And I was like really worried about this guy thinking he shouldn't be doing this because the mountain is extremely steep and the cave is very high and it's derelict and it's absolutely empty. Anyway, he went. And before the evening, before night fell, he came back. So I said to him, uh, everything okay? What, what happened? And he said, you know what? You were right. I got frightened. So what frightened you? You're a man. Why you become so scared? He said, you know, when it was split silence and you don't hear nothing you know that silence can scare a man of strength and of power and of might he said when i just was surrounded by absolute silence i said i can't stay here and he came back we don't know what happened to him up there and how he was attacked by the jinn allahu a'lam but for sure thereafter, he had encounters with the jinn. I used to live in the same house as him and he would tell me that I'd be sitting reciting the Quran and the doors would just open by themselves. And there's no wind, there's no fans, uh, there's no loose hinges. Just for him, this would start to happen. So uh, one of the sheikhs that we were living with, he informed uh, one of his friends who told us to be ready at Fajr time. And that person took us at Fajr time to go and pray Fajr with a very righteous, pious uh, scholar and a man of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, on the outskirts of Damascus. So we went and prayed with him. And after we prayed Fajr with him, he said to this student who I used to live with, he said, so what's the issue? He said, this is what's been happening with me. And the Shaykh then, uh, he, he, he held on to his finger and he squeezed the finger and he was able to extract the jinn from my friend and after that that day alhamdulillah he he didn't have any more experiences with the jinn but the, the 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 thing is that we have to be very careful we shouldn't overstep our limits look we can just about understand and no we can't even understand our own creation within our own selves there are signs there are uh, um, mysteries that mankind hasn't yet discovered and understood let alone a total a different species and a total different creation and a being to us. You know, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went with, uh, took Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an with him to recite the Quran to the jinn, what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do? He drew a circle around Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and he said, don't come out of this circle. What was that circle? That circle was a wall of protection that the jinn could not infiltrate and go in to protect Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an. If that's who the companion of the Prophet وسلم, that the messenger of Allah وسلم, is creating this wall of protection for him and not allowing him to go with him, then who are we, the common folk, to 
try to engage with the jinn and look into the, uh, the, the world of the jinn and try to access that, that's not something for us. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without a doubt has created mankind and jinn kind. We know that from the Quran, but it's not befitting and it's extremely dangerous that if mankind starts to engage uh, and try to infiltrate and enter into the realm of the jinn because they can harm human beings, they can uh, destroy human beings and the worst of things is that they can even uh, bring uh, waswasa and whisperings into the minds of human beings and take their minds from them We have to, in this world in which there are human beings and jinn kind we have to protect ourselves from them the way the Prophet ﷺ created a wall of protection around Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. And the scholars have said that is by praying our daily prayers, making sure that our bodies, our clothes and our homes are always in a state of purity. The Shaykh that um, I went to with my friend, one of the things that he uh, really pressed on was make sure that your home is clean. Make sure your kitchen is clean, make sure your bathroom is clean, make sure the uh, floors are wop, mopped, make sure that the rubbish and the garbage is thrown outside in the big bins and not left inside the houses because that's what the jinn and the shayateen like is, is filth and impurities. So we have to keep ourselves in a state of purification. And number three, we have to protect ourselves and our children and our, uh, our loved ones with the recitations of protection that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam taught us, for example, to recite three times in the morning and in the evening, Bismillah alim. In the name of Allah, la shay'un, with whose name nothing in the heavens and the earth can harm anybody with anything. Alim. And he, Allah, is the all hearing and the all knowing. And to recite A'udhu bi kalimati min sharri ma khalaq. I seek refuge in Allah. I seek protection in Allah. And in the perfect words of Allah, from the evil of that which he has created. And from amongst that is the realm of the jinn that we don't know about. Those who, of them who are the believing people, their dealings are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even with them, we shouldn't engage them. There's one student in Damascus, a very close friend of mine, and he experienced, uh, uh, he, he would have daily experiences with a particular jinn. And that jinn was a Muslim jinn and a good jinn. But when he went and told some of the senior scholars and our teachers in Damascus, they said, even though this jinn is a good one and a righteous one and a pious one, you should still try and find a way of parting yourself from the jinn because we're a different being and a different uh, species and a different... Uh, uh, we, we are totally different to the jinn. So there might be a time when there's a conflict and the jinn overpowers you. So you should try to part away from the jinn. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protection.